Hi there. Um, what I'm going to show you today is how to use an external library that we've created to get access to um, market data. So um, we're using a company called TrueFX and they provide real-time data um, direct before it goes to the brokers. So TrueFX brings you real dealable prices from the market making banks. It's delivered directly with no intermediary and uh, with TrueFX, everyone with an internet connection can get access to this data. So it's untouched liquidity. Um, so this price has come in straight from the source and we've created a, a, wrap around, a wrapper library to make it easier for you to access this data to use in your C-Trader, C-Bots or indicators um, for whatever you want to use it for. This is just so you can get access to different data to do some cross-referencing or correlation or something like that. So to find the product, it's easy to find. It's just pretty, it is actually just a library and an example um, C-Bot file showing you how to use the library. Um, you just come to our website, clickalgo.com Go under trading software and under here you've got trading api plugins and under the plugins you've got it here truefx web api now if you scroll down it gives you more information about um, what it does the kind of information that gives you the currency pair symbol millisecond timestamp the big big figure the bid big figure sorry uh, bid points offer big figure offer points high the greatest offer low the smallest bid price since the current pairs roll time um, and, and so on and open the mid price at currencies pairs roll time so uh, these would be if you don't understand what that is they'd be easy to look up to find out exactly what they do um, and we show in the example bot how to do both a synchronous and asynchronous call so you've got example code to show you to do that and we just print the data straight to the log file to make it simple to use now the data that comes back is just populated into a collection of objects so you can access them really easily from your code you don't have to write any complex code to do it our wrapper do that for you um, and we provide the documentation there that actually tells you more information so what i'll do now is quickly show you trefx so if you're interested to find out who they are um, this is who they are go to the about about trefx and you can find out a little bit more information about them and the kind of data that they provide and who they provide it to and if you go into market data market oops wrong one market data try again uh, true FX web API now this is the API um, that we're using and if you want to look at the documentation you can just click on here and you can actually download the documentation which I'm going to do now actually I'm going to preview it just to show you the uh, currency symbols that you can use so it comes with an authenticated or non-authenticated you don't need to know this really but we've done it so it's authenticated so you've got access to all of these symbols so you get real-time price data on all of these symbols okay so I'm just going to close that now and I'm going to go to um, <clears throat> CTrader. So in CTrader Ultimate, um, this is assuming you've put the library in here. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you are um, experienced coders to do this. So I'm going to open it with Visual Studio. And the first thing you'll need to do when you download the example file or even your own code is actually just reference the assembly. So obviously you probably know that already. So you just go into the references, it's called clickover.truefx. It will be part of the download. Make sure that's referenced and you have the using at the top there to import the libraries. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna do a quick walk walkthrough of the code just to help you if you wanna start implementing it into your own um, systems. So just make sure you've got access rights as internet because it actually calls the uses the internet to get the web API to get the data. So you need that access rights. Your currency list, you need to put them in in comma delimiting. So, and it has to be a forward slash between each currency. So if you want ORD USD, you do ORD forward slash USD comma. And if you want USD JPY, you do USD forward slash JPY comma and so on. And then you can add additional symbols. I'm just gonna do the example with two currency pairs. Okay, you need to sign up. It's easy to do. Just go to their website, enter your email address in. You don't have to put any other information in. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward to sign up. We signed up in a few minutes and you get a username and password and that username and password you'll use to authenticate so you can get access to those 28 currency pairs of real data and this setting here and asynchronous operation um, this just allows you to say yes or no i'll go into that into more detail in a minute and i'll tell you exactly what asynchronous does or, as, or <coughs> synchronous okay so c trader events when it starts it just splits the currency list into um where do you go where do you go where do you go currency list I think I put it somewhere on oh, my eyes are going or oh, currency list just puts it into a string and just spits them out it takes the sorry I'm going crazy now sorry about that it just takes the spaces out it just puts a non-space in there it's pretty straightforward okay so if it's a um, asynchronous operation 
it calls the AntSync method. So I'm going to open up here and I'll just quickly explain what that does when I come to the code, actually. So if it calls an asynchronous operation, it calls async request, which comes down here to async request method. Yeah, this is the one it will call. Now, this just uses tasks, so it uses some threading. And what it does, it, it creates an asynchronous call to get the data so that your code can continue processing. So if you were doing um, some other tasks on your uh, application, especially if it was a trading robot, or if you're trying to get data from a lot of symbols and you don't want to, um, to wait, this asynchronous call will allow you to do other stuff while in the background it will go and get that. Uh, market data for you and when it comes back it will update it uses begin invoke on main thread it will come back and it will update this update currency prices and if I go there um, this just pretty much loops through the object that it's got back and prints out the values now to get access to the object that gets populated you just put um, you can access it through here big points big points you've got all the values here high low off a big big blah 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 so you pretty much got all the values you can access through the object um, that's coming back through here. Now the asynchronous, um, you could look up how to use tasks, but I'm not going to go into detail about tasks, um, but that's just to show you that if you wanted to do an asynchronous call, um, if you were to do a different type or modify it, I would learn a bit more about threading before you start um, messing about with it. Okay, so the sync request, which is the one that I'm going to go into, which is probably one that you'd want to know how to use. Um, what happens is this will just call to get the data and it will wait to the program, your program will wait till the data comes back before it carries on um, processing. So in this case, we create a new instance of the FX prices um, object, pass in your username, password and the currency that you want to, the, the currency list you want to get the data from. It just checks if it's not null and then it says, okay, get live prices. So the FX dot get live prices will actually get your live prices and it will bring back um, a list of currencies. So you can see that it's got I list, the interface of um, the object currency. It's a class and it will come back with all those values. So this will get populated with all the currency prices. And then here, update currency prices, it just passes it in as a parameter, as I showed you before. If I go to the definition, and then it just loops through that object, the collection of objects, and just prints out the values. Pretty straightforward. It's not uh, rocket science, so it should be easy for you to use. And this will show you a way of getting access to that data. And I've showed you how to do it asynchronously and synchronously. So I'm going to go to C Trader again and just do a quick, um, I hope that I've built. Yep, I'm going to add a, it doesn't matter what symbol you add, it's, it's just the fact that you're launching this from here. Obviously, you can run it as an indicator as well. Now it prints it to the log file. And I'm going to put my username and password up here, which I'll change later. <laughs> so I can just show you how it would work. OK, so I've got a synchronous operation and I've got two currency pairs that I want to get the data for and it's going to print it to the log file. So if I press the play button, see, it took a few seconds to run if it was because it's asynchronous. Um, if you were running your code, those two seconds might be important if you were doing some data crunching or um, an automated trading system. So you might want to be using the asynchronous method that would have gone off and done other stuff. And if you had done synchronous, you'd have had a slight delay. And so you can see there it comes back with all the information. So it's come back with two currency pairs and the values for each one of them. OK, USD, JPY and the one at the top. Oh, it's back to front. US, or USD and then USD JPY and it comes up the information. So that's how it works. It's pretty easy to use. Um, I'm hope, I hope you find it useful and maybe you can find something to use it for in your trading systems or indicators. There you go. So that's it. Um, to find it, just again, just come to our website. And if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up at the bottom. Um, this product is free and we are planning to, I am planning to um, build more APIs and <clears throat> sorry, do more online algorithmic trading videos to help traders um, with their career. Okay, thank you very much.